you hitting the bottle again? I told you about that. In today's video, we're going to talk about sampling and we were to send your gold off once you're done. All that and a whole lot more yeah. coming up. Uh, hey, Slim, you want some beans? No, I don't want huh? beans. You know, you mm, yeah, right. nothing like beans on a hot day, boy. Come on now, get that bottle out of here. You need to eat something, put some meat on those bones. Come on now, boy. You gotta put some meat on those bones. Mm. Oh, man, these are good. So, all right, let's get started. Now, the first thing to do if you're going to sample hard rock, which is what I'm talking about today, I'm not talking about placer, you're going to need a way to crush that rock up into a powder. The poor man's way is a dolly pot or mortar and pestle. This is Slim's mortar and pestle. Ain't that right, boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what Slim used to use all the time. And that's what the old timers used to use back in the day when they went out in the field after they were grub staked. They'd bring one of these. They're usually much bigger, of course. But we're going to start with this and move our way up. Remember that bag of ore that I got from one of our premium patrons? We're going to crush a sample of that up and see what's in it. And then we're going to sample some of this ore right here that we got from one of our mines. Now, Christopher Young, you know all about this ore, so I ain't going to say where it came from. All right, so let's get all this stuff set up, and then we'll take it up to the next level for you people who don't want to wear your arm out with this thing. So come on! Let's go! You're gonna need a mortar and pestle. You're gonna need some jet dry. You're gonna need a jeweler's loop. Ain't that right, Slim? That's right. You're gonna need a gold pan. I like the Garrett Super Sluice. And of course, you're gonna need a classifier. Uh, you can use anything from a number eight up to a number 20. I recommend a number 20 when you're sampling load gold because it's usually gonna be small. Now, when they say a number 10 or number eight or number 20, all that means is how many of these little openings there are per linear inch. This screen here has eight square openings per linear inch, so this would be classified as what? A number eight. If it had 10 openings, a number 10. If it had 20 openings, a number 20. Now, like I said, I like using a number 20 because when I'm working with hard rock, it gets rid of all that waste material, and I know that gold's gonna be super fine. You're probably noticing the funky colors on this thing. There's a guy out there I wanna give a shout out to. His name's Gary Bass. I'll leave a link down below. Now he does custom printing. He can put anything you want on there. He'll even put Slim on there for you too. Now let's stop all this jaw jacking and I'll show you what to do. So you know what I'm gonna say, hi huh, Slim? I never do. Ah, uh, you better know. So come on, let's no. go. All right, so you're gonna need a pan and tub full of water and you wanna put some jet dry in it. Slim, hand me that jet dry. Come on, all right. You're just gonna put a little in there. Now, you put the jet dry in there to break the surface tension of the water because fine gold will float on the top of that surface tension like a mosquito does. You got your gold pan, make sure you season it. If you don't know how to do that, you need to go back to school, boy. So you take your mortar and pestle. You got your ore. Now you're gonna proceed to crush it up, boy. Just put a little in there. You don't want to overdo it, because you'll plug it up. Don't be a knucklehead and put your fingers on the top like this. And don't have your hand on like this, because I guarantee you, you come down and hit that, ooh, your crushing days are over. Put your hand underneath the rim to hold it, or you can put it in a hole to hold it, but never have your hand on the top. Now when you're crushing this up, make sure you wear eye protection. All right, so now you got them done, crushed up all your ore. Put that classifier on top of your gold pan. Dump that monker out. It's gonna take a couple times to crush it all down. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Now you take your jeweler's loop. It's gonna be at 10 times. I don't like anything over that. And then you inspect. It's gonna be real fine, real small. I like doing it the easy way. And that's why I got one of these. It's an impact mill. It's a K&M. Ain't that right, boy? Easy, crazy. <laughs> yeah, easy. Easy like Sunday morning, boy. Now I'm going to show you some of the modifications that we made to this. And I'm going to tell you where you can get one. And you even get a discount if you mention our name. Ain't that right, boy? That's right. Stop hitting that oh, bottle. Oh, boy. <laughs> we picked up this K&M Crusher from Steve Hamilton. He runs a shop called Make Your Own Gold Bars. I'll leave a link down below. Now Steve is offering the leg attachments that go with it. And they have wheels. So you can roll this monk around and get it out of the way if it's... If it's in somebody's yeah, cabin, yeah. let's take a look inside because I know you want to look in there. We welded these links 
together with a chunk of steel. Do you see that? Went ahead and put a piece of metal, like a big paddle on the end here, welded it on there, hard faced the edges. That way there's more surface area to strike the material as it's coming in through this port right here. We hard faced three strike plates to help break up the material so it's just not sloshing around in there. As we covered up this exit port which is on the bottom and we put our own exit port on the front of the plate. And that way it keeps the screen from being damaged too much and also it's easier to change it in and out just by popping the plate off instead of having to deal with that. The biggest thing that we notice is that it, it loads up sometimes down on the bottom especially when you're working with soft limonite. Now if you plan on building one of these monkers or you want to modify one, I highly recommend that you put the exit screen here on the side and not here in the front or on the bottom. And the reason for that is that as the material, as this is spinning around this direction, material comes in through the front, it gets pulverized, it hits the strike plates, it travels up and around. If you have your exit port here, it's naturally going to want to come out as this thing is spinning this way. If it's too big, it'll slide down and get caught up and go around again, hit these strike plates, explode, and try to come out a second time or a third time or however long it takes. If you have your exit port in the front or on the bottom, then the material has a tendency to build up right here. And then that'll clog up your machine. I've seen it a million times. You don't want that. So if you plan on running soft limonite or lots of material, it's best to have the exit port up here. And with a large surface area of screen, you can run this a lot faster, your intake. With it here in the front and the bottom, you got to run it slow. And of course you've seen we've done that with our larger models too. It works really well. And it's easy to lift up clean and change the screen out. The screen doesn't get damaged at all. When the screens are down here towards the bottom, they have a tendency to get beat up a lot and you have to change them out more frequently. Alright, let's stop all this jaw jacking. Get the front yeah. plate on. Yeah, please. <laughs> I think Sam's got a generator out back. Anyway, let me see if I can hook this thing up. We'll start grinding stuff because I know that's what you want to see. I want to see it too. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? Don't you, boy? No, you better. So come on. Let's go. Look, you see I got this big tube on here that goes down to a five gallon bucket. Trust me, if you run one of these, you better run some kind of tube into a bucket because the dust will kill you. Alright, here we go. Be careful with this love joy over here. You get your hand caught in there, it'll tear your fingers clean off. All right, let's get this bucket, and then we're gonna see what we got. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Never do. So come on, let's go. And now, anytime you put your hands inside this drum, you make sure you unplug it, boy. We're running a 20 mesh screen on here. Now, when you're working with hard material like quartz or andesite or anything like that, it's great to run these fine screens. But when you start working with softer material like your limonites, you're going to have to make the screen openings bigger because that limonite will plug it up. Even if you have it on the side, of you, it'll plug it up. It's like clay. It'll plug it clean up. You have to understand the types of rock that you're working with when you run it through this guy. And there's been some times where it's been so soft, I don't run a screen at all. But let's get on to panning this out because I've got to know what I've got. So let's get it on. All right, now look at this material. It's ultra fine. It's minus 20 down to about 100 mesh, like baby powder. And that's perfect for liberating gold out of hard rock. That's what you want. Break it down as far as you can. Anywhere from 50 to 80 is fine. You don't need to get all crazy and go 100, 200 mesh. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, man, that's perfect. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Now you're going to need to break it up. Alright, here we go. Now we'll see if you know what you're talking about, Jim. You want to go slow because you're working with ultra fine gold. Alright, let's see what we got here. What do you got there, Jim? I got some ultra fine gold there, son of a boy. I got ultra fine pieces right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. Got another one there. I got two pieces right there. right, And I got a whole bunch of fines in there. 
Look at that. Oh, yeah. And there's little tiny pieces of gold all throughout there. And all the gold's all rounded up from running through that mill. See that? There's a ball right there. Little tiny specks. All running through there. Isn't that nice? Ooh, and that was just a little tiny sample. Ooh, isn't that nice? Ooh, I don't care how small the gold is, I always get excited when I see it. Now, I get a lot of people asking me, Jeff, I got all these gold buttons laying around. What do I do with them? What do they do with them, Slim? Send them to me. <laughs> if they're specimens, obviously you don't crush them up. Well, you sell those at auction houses or online. But if it's super fine gold that you smelt it into a button, you can sell them to refineries. One refinery that we go to a lot is Midwest Refinery. I'll leave a link down below. They pay decent spot price for 24 karat gold and they've been in business forever. Now talking about gold, I got a big surprise for you. We just pulled out a whole bunch of gold from Slim's Drift Mine and there's one piece in particular I want to show you. We're going to be giving it away. This one broke apart into two pieces. Come here, take a look at this boy. Alright, have a look at this monker. You can see where the two pieces fit together right there. That's nice. And then it snapped in two. That was a single piece. It came out of there. Now I'm curious to see what that single piece weighs, so let's weigh it up. Look at that monker. 7.5 grams. Single piece. Isn't that nice? Huh? Ooh, I bet you that would have been nicer if it was held together. 7.5 gold's going for what? 64, $65 a gram right now? Ooh, it's about $2,000 an ounce. Say that right, boy. Who are you calling, boy? You're boy. the gold monster. Now, I don't, I'm not a mathematician. But right there, you're not a mathematician. Yeah. I ain't a mathematician, but that's some good money right there. Ain't that right, boy? That sounds good to me. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Now the reason why I'm pointing this out is because we're going to be giving this gold away as a single piece. So if you're interested in getting in on this gold, I'm going to leave a link at the end of the video that looks something like uh, that. I, looks like I, that. I, I. Click on it, make a $10 pledge and you're in like Flynn. And of course we'll be giving away all the rest of the gold that we mine out of his drip mine. We're going to get on out of here. I hope you like the video. And if you like the video, smash that like button. Smash it hard, boy. And of course subscribe. Now, I'm going to give you a reason why you should subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Me and Slim are going to be giving away 200 bags of pay dirt. 200? That's right. When we reach 200,000 subscribers, which is right around the corner. All you got to do is be an active subscriber and you get yourself a free bag of pay dirt. But with gold pushing past $2,000 an ounce, you'd be crazy not to, boy. Yeah. All right, we're going to get on out of here because I got part stroke. I'm out of iced tea. The beans are starting to smell at the cabin. And frankly, his breath is killing me. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams. And who the Yeah, you better know your name, boy. Saying you need to sample your ore, but you don't know what to do. I just gave you two easy tips, so 23 could do. Take care, everybody. Yeah.